Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna do a Q&A Get Ready With Me. Um, I asked you guys in the community tab down below and on my Instagram stories um, to ask me any questions you had for a Q&A video. Um, I did this maybe about a year ago and it didn't seem like many people were very receptive to the idea, um, but this time around it seemed like everybody was really into it. I had a lot of questions asked, um, so I've compiled them together. I'm gonna try to get through all of them and we're gonna do like a full face. I'm not really gonna talk a whole lot about the products that I'm using as I'm going because I'm gonna be running my mouth so much anyway. I am gonna talk a little bit about one thing that I'm using today. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but I really want to just jump in and get started. So I've already been washed and exfoliated and moisturized and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to kind of jump right into the makeup. And it seemed like I got a lot of questions about when I got into makeup, that kind of thing. Let's see, I've got, when did you get into makeup? When did you begin your makeup journey and what inspired you? How old were you when you got into makeup? What got you into makeup? There, there was a lot of that. So my earliest memories of being alive so like I don't know three four years old um, when your first memories start um, the first thing that I ever remember about being alive was being super super obsessed with the band Kiss I have a brother that's six years older than me and he was really into Kiss Twisted Sister and Motley Crue um, all of that stuff that was really popular in the early 80s and so you know anything that he was into I was really into as well so I I really became obsessed with Kiss at a very, very early age. And then as the 80s went on, you had bands like Poison and Pretty Boy Floyd and stuff like that that I just always thought was so cool. Um, not only was I, you know, really into the music, because I really like rock music, um, but just the whole image and, you know, like the long hair and the makeup. And I just always thought it looked so cool. And I was just really into that. Um, and I just, you know, I couldn't wait to grow up so I could have long hair and wear makeup and have tattoos and smoke cigarettes and, you know, just like all of that stuff that I thought was so cool as a little kid and I did smoke for over 20 years I quit like five and a half years ago so I'm no longer a smoker but and then the neighbor lady when I was a kid um, she was also an Avon lady and I used to play with her daughter all the time she was a couple of years younger and she had like Barbie dolls and I loved playing with Barbies and that kind of shit when I was a kid and since her mom was an Avon lady um, I remember she had all those little tiny lipstick samples and all of that sample makeup and stuff and we used to take that and we would go into her bedroom and like you know put on lipstick and stuff and I just thought it was so cool because it was like, you know, Paul Stanley wore red lipstick. I wanted to wear red lipstick too, you know? So I was always very inspired by music, um, even though I'm not a musician and I don't play any instruments. Um, I do have a drum set, but I don't know how to play. So again, I was really inspired by music and definitely theatrical bands. So that was always my thing. And so that's really where it started for me and where I got my inspiration for wearing makeup was just, you know, all the music that I was into and they wore makeup and they had cool hair and wore cool clothes. And I wanted to look like that too, you know? What were some of the struggles you went through being a boy wearing makeup? Um, honestly, my struggle started out like way earlier than and when I started wearing makeup. I mean, I was always a weirdo. I was always a new kid. We moved around a lot when I was a kid. I was always like different, um, which of course at some point everybody realizes, ah, this kid is gay, you know? So we'll make fun of him for that. So I already had that going on all through middle school. So, but by the time that I started wearing makeup regularly, um, I don't know, I was already just kind of used to people being dicks to me anyway. I started dabbling a little bit in like the ninth grade. And then by the time time that I was in 10th grade it was on it was like full makeup every day and this was like 1994 1995 and like people weren't doing that the way that they're doing it today you know um there was no Jeffree Star in the 90s you know what I mean there was a kid in my 10th grade geometry class who was a total fucking prick Every day I would come into class and he would jump out around a corner and scream circus freak into my face. Um, and so I had gone to the mall the one day and I went to one of those like t-shirt shops where they would like print whatever on a t-shirt for you. Um, I think maybe they did like airbrushing and that kind of shit too. Um, and I got a t-shirt made that said circus freak on it. 
Um, and then I wore that to school and he never called me that again. And then at some point, um, I had an accounting teacher. I took accounting for two years in high school. It was really easy class and I got an A the whole time. But again, I had this teacher who um, was really shitty to me all the time. And she would just make comments about like the way that I dressed and what I looked like and the makeup and everything. And then the one day she got like super fucking shitty and called me out in the middle of class in front of everybody about why did I look the way that I do and why couldn't I just dress like everybody else and it just kind of blew up and I kind of freaked out on her in front of the class and cussed her out in front of everybody um, which kind of started a thing um, between me and her and then the new superintendent that year. He was really shitty to me all year too. Um, in fact I ended up getting so many out of school suspensions that year just for running my mouth um, because you know if you want to be a dick to me I'm gonna be a dick right back to you that's just the way it is but luckily I grew up in a time when there wasn't like social media um, there was barely internet by the time that I graduated high school um, so you know you could escape that shit you know you went to school all day and people hassled you there but when you left you could go home and like escape it for the rest of the night you know what I mean where now it's like kids are made fun of all day at school for being different or weird or whatever it is and then they go home and they're bullied online too you know what I mean and over the years things have evolved and you know you've got RuPaul's Drag Race so you know drag queens are kind of mainstream and you've got Jeffree Star in the public eye so you know you've got dudes in makeup kind of all over the place but things haven't completely changed and things are never gonna change and be better a hundred percent um like when brands will repost a picture of me on their Instagram accounts or whatever uh, people see a dude in makeup and you still have people that leave like barfing face emojis like all the way down in the comment section but you get over it, you move on, you move past it, and then you're like, well, fuck you. They reposted a picture of me. They didn't repost a picture of you. They saw something cool in me that they didn't see in you. So <laughs> what do you do for work outside of YouTube and Instagram? Um, well, I have been a hairstylist for almost 20 years now. I started beauty school in April of 2000. I got my cosmetology license in June of 02, and I've been doing hair ever since. And I've worked at the same salon now for 12 years. Um, again, I do hair, I do women's hair, men's hair, I do haircuts, I do color, I do body waxing, I do makeup. Um, I have recently started to do microblading. And it's crazy because I work in a college town, so it's like, at this point, you have all these 18-year-old kids coming in um, for their freshman year of college um, and their new clients coming in. And it's crazy because you think about it and it's like, oh my God, I've been doing hair for longer than you've been alive. It, it's, it's crazy to me. It's crazy to me how long I've been in it. And it just doesn't seem like it's been that long either, honestly. What was your biggest challenge so far in cosmetology and how did you overcome them? Um, my timing. And I still haven't overcome it. <laughs> um, I'm very thorough. Um, I will add steps that probably don't need to be there. Um, I mean, again, like even a full face of makeup for me generally takes four hours. Um, I will overcomplicate everything um, and make things take much longer than they probably need to. And I feel like we're at a point now where, especially with Instagram and people's expectations, expectations of what can be done with hair and a lot of things can be done with hair um but under time constraints and budget restraints and then the amount of hair that people grow out of their heads is just I don't understand where all this fucking hair comes from um I think I'm always gonna be the world's slowest hairdresser I think I'm always gonna be running over I'm always going to be running behind um, I am a lot better about it now than I used to be and if you are one of my longtime clients watching this you'll know that I have definitely been able to cut my timing down considerably from where it was a decade ago um, but that one's really hard do you have any funny hairdressing stories 
I think probably the one time that I laughed harder than any other time doing hair. And it didn't have anything to do with doing hair. It's just something that happened at work while I was doing hair. Um, and this is really fucking funny. So um, the owner of the salon that I work at, um, she is one of the funniest fucking people I've ever met in my life. And she is a big fucking asshole too, which is why I love her so much. And early on when the salon had first opened, her brother worked there as a receptionist part-time and he had gone into the bathroom to take a dump. And the layout of the salon worked out so that my station looked directly into the bathroom. And so she had walked over there to the bathroom door and just kind of like tested the handle to see if it was locked. And it wasn't. He hadn't locked the door. And so I had a client in my chair. I'm doing a haircut, right? So she opens the door wide open. So we've got me, we've got my client looking directly in the bathroom at him. So he kind of freaks out, doesn't know what to do. So instead of just like staying where he was at, he actually stood up off the toilet, pants down, everything hanging out, then realizes he's standing there naked. So he grabs a trash can and holds the trash can in front of himself. The whole time she's standing there with the door wide open, just like cackling, just like laughing at him and then my client's like oh my god what did they just see and again that's just the kind of people we are um I mean you know that's how you treat your family you make fun of them and you kind of humiliate them in public and Kenny didn't think it was funny at all in fact I remember him when he was finally done and he came out of the bathroom and he was just like why are you such a bitch and like left he like stormed and he left and we just continued to laugh because we thought it was the funniest thing we had ever seen I'd like to see you do your hair from start to finish just curious to see how you get your hair to look so amazing Amazing. Um, well, the thing about that is, um, I don't really honestly do anything to my hair. Now, about a year and a half ago, I did film a video that I'll link below, um, where I had cut, colored, highlighted my hair. I did the whole thing on camera. And then I think maybe I did kind of show you how I like style my hair, uh, because I really don't. Um, I wash my hair twice a week. I use a styling cream cream in it after it's, you know, good and towel dried. And then I just let it air dry. I don't do shit to my hair. Um, now my hair this week, I did use a curling wand on it. Um, just because I had some downtime at work and I was kind of bored. So I went ahead and curled my hair with a curling wand, which really doesn't ever happen. Um, and that picture is up on my Instagram account from a few days ago. But no, people have asked me that quite a few times to do a tutorial on how I style my hair and the honest truth is I just throw some shit in it and I let it figure itself out as it dries maybe every like maybe 10 minutes or so if it seems like something is hanging a little droopier and my wave isn't as intense in that area I'll go in and I'll just kind of like scrunch it a tiny bit but there really is no actual styling that goes into my hair I just I can't be bothered I spend too much time on my makeup to spend any time at all on my hair. So what is your nighttime and morning skin hydration routine? Well, I recently made a video about both my nighttime and my morning time complete skincare routine. So um, I feel like from time to time, things will change up, products will change up a tiny bit. But honestly, it's pretty consistent and it should all be in there as far as what I am currently using and what I'm currently doing for the most part it's definitely probably about 80% accurate at this point but I will go ahead and leave a link to that video down below so that you can check that one out makeup and skincare products you can't live without so if I had to pick one out of each category um, honestly I think that's pretty easy as far as skincare the one thing that I couldn't live without would be the Mac fast response eye cream and I think that I might have talked about that recently where I have tried so many different eye creams from so many different price points and it seems like since I had LASIK surgery two years ago my eyes tend to be a little bit more sensitive to certain things and definitely eye cream is one of them and not only for that reason but I just really like the texture I like the consistency um, I like what it does for my under eye area um, that one is just a really good one for me I've been using it for years um, surprisingly they haven't discontinued it I'm really surprised because everything that I love becomes discontinued as far as makeup items go I could not live without lip gloss um, I fucking love lip gloss and in particular 
particular, the Buxom lip gloss formula is my favorite. Um, I like a really sticky lip gloss. Like I love MAC lip gloss and I know that people hate it because it's so sticky. Um, but I feel like the stickier the lip gloss, the longer it's going to stay on and I don't have to keep reapplying it. And I love the Buxom formula in particular because not only does it claim to be plumping, but I swear it is visually plumping. Like if you put that on and you look in the mirror 10 minutes later and your lips look almost twice the size as they did when you started. So I really like that one a lot. But I could definitely get rid of everything else if I had a good eye cream and a good lip gloss. That's me. Do you ever use BB cream instead of regular foundation? If so, do you have a recommendation? Actually, yeah, I really like the IT Cosmetics BB cream um, or CC cream or whatever the hell they call it. And actually, even more than their regular BB cream, I like the, um, what is it called, Bye Bye Foundation. Um, I don't know what it was that I liked better about that one. I think the shade range was maybe a little bit better at the time. And I felt like it almost was a little bit less like full coverage and a little bit less makeup-y than the original BB cream or CC cream or whatever it was called. Um, but yeah, Bye Bye Foundation by It Cosmetics, I really did like a lot. Now, obviously, we all know that their shade range is fucking garbage. And not even just for the dark to light spectrum, but I mean, I feel like it's such a huge problem with all brands that like their undertones are just really, really off. Um, and It Cosmetics is no exception. But when you only have like nine colors of said product, you're definitely not going to be getting undertones correct either. But I haven't tried any from any other brands. So if anybody else has any suggestions of BB creams that you like, go ahead and leave those down below. Which makeup products do you keep buying? Um, well, this is one of them. <laughs> this is the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint in the shade Taupe. This is a double-sided eyebrow product. So on this end, it has like a little sponge tip applicator that dips into like this waxy powder. And then on this side, you've got this little, uh, it's a brush tip applicator um, with like a, uh, with like an ink inside. The first one lasted me around nine months or so. Um, and I love this product. I've only recently started using the sponge tip. Um, and I like it because I can kind of go in there and take away a little bit of the powderiness that I get from like my foundation and just kind of really lightly and really softly map out my eyebrow shape. Even though they're microbladed, when I'm doing a full face of makeup like this, I still like to go in and create an entire eyebrow. And then obviously mascara gets bought a lot. I mean, you know, that's one of those products that every few months you need to replace anyway. Um, but, you know, I wear makeup pretty much every day. So I just feel like you end up going through mascara a lot faster than anything else. I also go through lip gloss pretty fast. It's funny because somebody recently, I was like using up a lip gloss and somebody was like, I can't believe that you actually use up a lip gloss. I never use up an entire lip product. And I was like, I feel like I go through quite a bit of them. And I do, I have a bunch of them empty in a drawer right here. So that definitely gets repurchased a lot. Um, setting powder gets repurchased quite a bit because I use a lot of powder. And I feel like that's it as far as things that I'm always buying because I need to replenish them. Um, but I am I'm always buying more eyeshadow just because I can't fucking help it. Um, I don't need to keep buying it, but I do. Which makeup product will you never buy again because of how bad it is? Any of the Urban Decay setting sprays. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know if it's just my skin. I don't know if it's like an oily skin thing. I don't know if I'm right and they're just awful and everybody else on planet Earth has just been roped into buying the setting spray to keep their makeup in place. The Urban Decay All Nighter Spray, definitely the De Slick Spray. They do for me the complete opposite of what they're supposed to do. Um, they instantly make my face look really shiny and really thick. Um, they do not help the longevity of my foundation. In fact, they break it down faster. Now, I'm a huge fan of this all-nighter setting powder from Urban Decay. This stuff is amazing, but I feel like this stuff could come in a couple of different colors and not just like the one universal translucent shade. Because if I really go in ham with that powder on the center of my face, where I keep things a little bit brighter and a little bit lighter, um, it really does add a little bit of darkness to 
to my foundation. So I feel like you really do need to go in with a lighter hand with that powder. Um, a little bit too much is going to kind of give you like not coverage, but you're going to see it on your skin a little bit more. But for me, that powder just works so much better than any setting spray ever does. And I've been a sucker and I bought the Slick setting spray twice now, um, thinking that maybe I just wasn't using it right. Maybe I used too much. Maybe I didn't use enough. You know what I mean? So I've actually bought that setting spray twice and returned it twice. Um, never again. I never, ever again. Favorite drugstore brands and makeup products. Um, yeah, actually I've got a few. So I really like the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. Um, that is one of my favorite Favorites, and I've definitely talked about that on my channel a few times before. Um, I really like that one for days when you're not wearing a lot of makeup. If you're going to have like a no makeup makeup day and you have like some mild discoloration, maybe you have just like a little bit of blotchiness on the skin. You don't have a whole lot to cover up, but you just need a little something. If you want to get a little bit of extra coverage out of it, apply it with the doe foot to the area where you have to cover and then just kind of let it sit on your skin for a few minutes and almost let it dry down a little bit and then just kind of very softly blend that out um, either with a brush your fingers a beauty blender whatever works best for you and i feel like it gives you a little bit more coverage than if you just applied it and then blended it out um but i really like that one a lot um i'm also a huge fan of the maybelline fit me matte and poreless foundation for those days when I'm really going for more of like a full coverage or like a really makeupy kind of look you know I really like that one I think that it is as good if not better for me personally than the Mac studio fix fluid I feel like it's very very similar to that one and it's so cheap what are your favorite makeup brushes I do have a video all about that that I will link down below and I'm pretty sure that everything is the same now as it was when I made that video but I'd say if you want a really good set of affordable eye brushes um, I don't think you can ever go wrong with Morphe they're so affordable they're so good um, I feel like I've seen over and over again where people have talked shit about Morphe brushes saying that they don't last and they're scratchy and that you wash them once and they fall apart um, I'm calling calling bullshit on all of that right now because I have so many Morphe brushes. I use them all the time. I wash them all the time. I have never had a problem with any of the Morphe brushes I own. Let's see. The Morphe M433 is a really good dupe for the old Mac 217. Um, the, let's see, the M504, I have like almost 10 of these, I think, because there's so many different things you can do with it. The M330, um, this one is kind of like detailed blender. I really like that one for the crease. Um, the M507, which is a smaller version of the one I just showed you. Um, and this is like really pinpoint detailed crease work and like underneath the eyes. I really like that one. Um, I've got a couple pencil brushes that I really like a lot. The E36, the M431, the M421, which is really good for like, you know, packing color onto the lid. And then recently I got the M213, which is like a really tiny shader brush which can really be used for kind of like smoking out the lower lash line. And then to go along with that question, I've also got what brushes do you recommend for foils, satins, and glittery shadows? Um, for the most part, I use my finger. I think that your finger works better for all of those. It just kind of lays down the product really intense, um, really opaque, and I think that you get the best foiled effect with a finger than you're ever going to get with a brush. But if you want to see a video that's just dedicated to my favorite brushes, I will link that video down below as well. And then I have two more that kind of go together. Um, favorite multi-chrome eyeshadow or pigment company, and top favorite indie brands. Um, so as far as multi-chromes go, the only ones I've tried and the only ones I own are by J. 
JD Glow Cosmetics, and those are pretty fucking rad. As far as the indies go, you guys know that I love a good indie brand. I use a lot of indie makeup on my channel, so JD Glow Cosmetics, Give Me Glow Cosmetics has some really good shadows and some really good pressed glitters. Um, Lit Cosmetics for glitter. I fucking love glitter. I have an entire glitter drawer here. And if you've never tried the eyeshadow Vintage Champagne from Vanessa's Vanity, click out of this video right now and go over to her site, buy that eyeshadow, and then you can come back over here and thank me when it comes in the mail, because holy fucking shit, it's beautiful. Another brand that I've actually recently discovered um, is a brand called Adept Cosmetics. Um, now, they make empty magnetic palettes, and they're going to be releasing eyeshadows pretty soon, too. And I just got this palette from Adept Cosmetics. This thing is beautiful. Um, it's really sturdy. It has, like, this fake crocodile or alligator or snake. I don't know what it is. And I depotted a bunch of eyeshadow palettes, and I put them all into this one. But I depotted all of my Jeffree Star palettes, so those are in here, along with some Kat Von D. Um, I've got some Colored Rain shadows. Colored Rain is really good for eyeshadows. They're a good indie brand. Um, and then Melt Cosmetics. I have the Gemini palette up here. And let me find some room here for this palette, because this is the one I'm going to be working out of today. Um, I actually have not touched any of these shadows since I put them inside of this palette. So I have a couple questions that are similar. Um, the one is, if you could collaborate with anyone, would you and who? Um, now, I'm not sure if they meant a brand or if they meant like another influencer or someone for a video or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and say if I was going to collaborate with someone on a video, I think that I would really like to collaborate not with another influencer. I would want to collaborate with a band, actually. I think it would really be cool to have a band like Pretty Boy Floyd on my channel, um, because obviously they're my favorite band ever, and to go ahead and do all of their makeup on camera and be able to kind of pick their brains about the history of the band, upcoming releases and tours and that kind of stuff that my audience might not really be that interested in, but it's something that I would really be interested in and something that I would really like to do. And you know, it seemed like a few years ago, like, Kim Kardashian was doing a bunch of collabs with beauty influencers and everybody was doing her makeup and that kind of stuff. And I honestly don't give a shit about somebody like Kim Kardashian. So that wouldn't appeal to me at all. I would much rather have like Steve Summers and Christy Majors come on my channel and get their faces painted. And again, just kind of pick their brain about stuff. And that's who I am. And that's what I would be interested in doing. And I mean, again, that's just kind of what I do here anyway. I do what I like to do. Um, I talk about what I want to talk about. And if you guys are along for the ride and if you're into it, then that's totally cool too. You know what I mean? And then what makeup brand would you want to do a collab with? I'm going to go ahead and say I would rather kind of collab with an indie brand um, rather than something that was more like a major brand because I don't know that I'm really that like mass marketable. You know what I mean? I feel like the beauty community as a whole doesn't really get me. Most people in general don't get me. And I don't know that a big brand would ever really know what to do with somebody like me. And my channel is really kind of generic. I don't have any kind of a budget going on here. Um, um, everything that I do from like filming to editing to uploading and all that shit is all done through an iPhone. So I'm definitely almost more like the John Waters of the beauty community. So I feel like I would really need to collab with somebody that was like, on a smaller scale. And I know that everybody just goes straight for an eyeshadow palette when they do a collab, but eyeshadow is the most fun makeup. And I feel like that's really what I would wanna do as far as a collab goes. But I already have it in my mind. I already kind of have it on paper. Um, and I really do have that perfect eyeshadow palette all put together. I just need to have it made. But again, a brand like Give Me Glow or Lit Cosmetics, and not just because they repost my stuff on Instagram, but because they really get me, they really understand my aesthetic. They just get it, they totally get it. They understand where I'm coming from, they understand my point of view. And I think when it comes to guys in the makeup community, you just see so much of the same 
everybody has the exact same look. Everybody's doing the exact same thing. And I really like that there's a few brands that totally understand and totally get that I'm not the norm and I'm not, you know, like a James Charles copycat. I don't have that same haircut. And I really like the idea of doing something like that, but I don't have any problem speaking my mind and I know exactly what I want and I'm really fucking picky. So I would actually be really scared that I would butt heads with the company if things weren't exactly how I wanted them, you know? Do you like matte eyeshadow colors or just shimmer? Well, I think we're answering that question right now. Um, no, seriously though, um, I think that matte eyeshadows are the foundation for any eye look. Now, I mean, an all shimmer eyeshadow look is fine, but I feel like there's just something missing. Um, there's just something very incomplete about it unless you have a really good structure with a matte eyeshadow. So definitely like matte eyeshadows. Some of your favorite color combos for eyeshadow looks, um, murky greens, purples, plums, mustard tones. Um, I love browns though. I love a good neutral. I love a good brown gold smoky eye. But as far as like actual color combos, I think that my favorite color combo ever anyway is purple and green. I think that purple and green just look so fucking cool together. And that's probably my actual favorite. And we've got purple going on right now. So who knows, this could end up being a purple and green eye look. I'm not sure yet. Any brands or launches you're not excited for? I'm never excited about holiday releases. Um, I don't give two shits about Christmas. Um, the only thing that I like about Christmas at all is like Christmas horror movies. Um, so like Christmas and holiday launches, I feel like everything is just like old products repackaged. Everything's in like a Christmas package that I don't care about. Or it's just kind of like the same color story. And I mean, there's only so many colors. I get that. Every color story has been done. Like what new could you come up with? And I think I'm also bitter about it because I feel like Christmas starts now in like August. And I feel like I'm so into Halloween and it's so ignored. Like no companies ever come out with anything for Halloween. Everybody goes straight for Christmas. And I'm like, come the fuck on. But brands that I'm not excited about, um, I would definitely say Too Faced. They do nothing for me. Um, and Too Faced way back in the day, they used to have like really cool branding and cool packaging and they had really interesting colors. And then at some point they just went very, very boring. I don't know. They just got really boring for me. Tarte is a brand that I've never been interested in at all. I don't even think I've ever used a product from Tarte to tell you the truth. But I'm always going to be more excited over a color story than I'm going to be excited about anything else. Kylie Cosmetics. I mean, I never had any interest in anything from that brand until this uh, last palette came out that I reviewed and I really liked it. But I've never been interested in anything from that brand and I think it just takes something really, really special and a really cool color story to really grab my attention, so. And they did that one time. We'll see if it ever happens again. Favorite horror genre? Um, definitely slashers. I grew up on 80s horror, and like I said earlier, when my very first memories of being alive were being obsessed with Kiss, I was equally obsessed with Jason Voorhees as a very small child. And not much has changed. I still love Kiss. I still love Jason Voorhees. Um, in fact, I have a cat named Jason. Um, she is eight years old, eight years old, nine years old. I think she's nine this year but definitely the slashers jason freddy michael myers chucky i love them all they're all great in my book do you have any favorite 80s and 90s horror movies absolutely actually that could be its own separate video on that subject uh, <laughs> but since i still have other questions to answer um let's keep that a little short and sweet um so obviously jason obviously the friday the 13th movies hands down those are my favorites um as far as that series goes my favorite favorite is definitely part five, um, which is an unpopular opinion, but that was just a really fun movie. Night of the Demons, Witchboard, those are really good 80s horror movies. Hollywood Ch 
Chainsaw Hookers is one of my favorite movies from the 80s. Um, and it's really cheesy. I mean, it's naked girls with chainsaws cutting people up. Um, it's really fun. And as far as 90s horror goes, I feel like the 90s was a great era for horror. Um, the early to mid 90s anyway. And not theatrically released movies, but like those direct to video, just kind of like shitty horror movies that you would go to like the video store and pick up on a Friday night. Ticks was a really good one. Ticks is a really fun movie. Um, and they're not just like, they're not just small ticks. They're like fucking ticks, you know? Um, that one was really good. And then my hands down favorite movie of all time was actually a 90s horror movie. Um, Return of the Living Dead 3. If you haven't seen it, you must. But there's a lot of really good ones and there's a lot that I can't even think of off the top of my head right now. So what I'll do is I'll compile like a really small list and I'll put, um, either a list or some trailers down below. Um, I feel like if you've got some trailers to watch, you can get more of an idea if you'd be interested in seeing those movies um, more than just being based on the title alone, you know what I mean? And then let me know if you've seen any of them and if you like any of them. Do you like any current scary movies? Um, as far as current scary movies go, I would say some of the better ones would be, hmm, the Conjuring, I thought, was really, really good, actually. Um, and I even liked the second one quite a bit. I thought that those movies were both really good. I think for the most part, everybody just tends to be remaking stuff, and I'm not a fan of the remake trend at all. But I think there have been a few halfway decent ones released in the last, like, 10 years. Um, the Human Centipede movies, I think those movies are brilliant because it was something completely new to the genre, you know? And in a world where all you've got as far as the horror genre goes is, like, like remakes and then like a random PG-13 horror movie. I think something like The Human Centipede was a breath of fresh air, you know what I mean? And I love movies that push the envelope like that where, you know, it doesn't have a happy ending and, you know, everything isn't roses and rainbows and unicorns at the end, you know what I mean? Where things are really, really fucked up and really gets you like, oh God, you know? If you had to choose Kiss or Alice Cooper and your favorite song and why? Well, obviously I'm choosing Kiss. Um, they were my first love, so I am always going to choose them above anyone else. And picking a favorite song, I guess, is kind of hard. There's so many albums and there's so much material. There's so many songs. My favorite album is Unmasked, so I guess I'm going to have to choose something off of that album since it is my favorite. And since I'm choosing off of Unmasked, I'm going to go ahead and say the song Tomorrow. Because for me, that song is just like pop perfection. It's so catchy. It's so poppy. And I feel like a lot of those like pop metal bands from the 80s, like Poison and bands like that, you can definitely tell that they were really influenced by the Unmasked album. It's a very similar sound. Top favorite songs at the moment. There actually are a few albums that came out in the past few months from a few of my favorite bands. Um, so Pretty Wild, they are a glam band from Sweden. They have a new album out and their song Meant for Trouble is so goddamn catchy and so fun. And then another one of my favorite bands just released an album a few months ago, um, Shonen Knife. They are an all-female Japanese punk rock band. Um, and they have a new album called Sweet Candy Power. And there is a song on that album called Ice Cream Cookie Sandwiches that I will link that down below too. God damn, talk about catchy. That song is so fucking fun. Are you into astrology? Um, not really. I mean, you know, I'm a Leo. I know what my sign is. And as far as like the kind of generic basic description of what a Leo is and like the characteristics and stuff. I suppose that mine is really kind of spot on, but I've never really paid too much attention to it. I mean, you know, I've read my horoscope a little bit here and there over the years, but 
Um, my horoscope never seems to make any sense to me. Um, and I guess I've heard people say that like your horoscope and then astrology is different. But again, I don't know anything about it because I just never really paid much attention to it. Will you ever do a room tour? Um, I feel like that's been asked over and over um, over the last few years that I've been doing videos here. Um, and at some point, probably yes, I will do a room tour. And I think the reason that I haven't done that video, even though it's been requested quite a few times, is that I guess that I make videos that I would want to watch and I don't ever really find myself watching room tours or any kind of like um, like makeup collection videos, any of that kind of stuff. Um, really early into those kind of videos, I just get bored and click out of them. So I guess since I'm not really that interested in watching that kind of video, I'm also not really as interested in making that kind of video. Um, now, since it has been requested over and over and over again, um, obviously you do want to see that kind of video so maybe that video would do well on my channel so I really should make it a point to actually film that video show you my makeup collection which really is not that impressive honestly um, because I'm always buying but then I'm also always decluttering so if you think that I have like this massive makeup collection to show off it's not at all true um, because I'm always getting rid of stuff so hopefully soon I know I've said that a few times and it still hasn't happened but it could happen in the near future is what I'm saying. Any new tattoos? Um, no, not really. I mean, just my eyebrows. It's funny because I always thought that I was going to have a full body suit. That's really what I wanted. Um, starting at my jawline, going all the way down my body, just my face peeking out. That was always the plan. But with me and tattoos, it's always been this thing where I just have like these big ideas and I have these big tattoos that I want to get started and I get them started. I would get something started. I would maybe go back and get like one more sitting done on it and then I wouldn't get another tattoo for like a year or two and then instead of finishing the last tattoo I would just start on another large project that was going to take a few sittings to finish um, and we just kind of did that over and over and over and over again. So at some point I would like to finish the tattoos that I do have um, before I go ahead and start on new ones you know what I mean? At some point I would love to get some new tattoos but again I just who who knows when that's gonna happen I would like to say it's gonna happen soon but realistically we're probably just gonna have all this like half done stuff that I have now you know that's probably where it's gonna end I don't know are you in love with anyone um, no just my dogs um, and you know maybe myself a little bit I am not into love and relationships and marriages and shit like that. Um, I am too damn selfish for all that. Um, I will love you for about an hour. I just feel like at this point in my life, I'm 40 years old, I'm halfway done, and I don't want to waste my time trying to make somebody else happy and to compromise my happiness to make somebody else happy. And I know that that sounds really shitty, um, but really at the end of the day, it's like, I'm here to make myself happy um, and I don't have time to make you happy. <laughs> That's really what it is. This one came up a few times. What are your pet peeves? I'm going to go ahead and say everything and everyone, every minute of every day. <laughs> Those people that make plans with you and then like the day before said plans, they start ghosting and then you don't hear from them for like a week and then they have some bullshit excuse that they left their phone at work for three days. Bullshit you did. What are my views on the beauty community? Um, well, first of all, I would have to say, that I think it's hilarious that it's called a community at all. I think we are using that term very loosely. I think that realistically, the beauty community is a bunch of assholes who are going to do anything to throw anyone else under the bus in order to climb their way to the top. You know what I mean? So you have all of that drama going on, which is already annoying enough. And I think that we're also at a point where there's just so much oversaturation of makeup. 
There's so many new brands and there's so many releases all the fucking time. There are no more colors. There are no more formulas. There's no more of anything that could come out that hasn't already been done or is even a little bit necessary. Like it's, it's all of it's unnecessary at this point. But again, it's too much makeup on this end and it's too many assholes and too much drama on this end. And I think that in the near, near future, it's all gonna be YouTube and Instagram and the beauty community as a whole. I see in the very near, near future, it just being completely done just absolutely done and then maybe at some point in a few or several years maybe the ball could get rolling again and it could be a thing again but I think that the way that everything is done and the way that we're doing it and the way that we see everything right now I think it's about to come to a head and I think it's about to be all over the way that we see things now. And you know what? I cannot put on lipstick and answer questions at the same time. So let me go ahead and finish this up and I'll come back for the last question. So the lips are on, they're really overdrawn. I went a little crazy um, and my hair probably has never been dirtier. Um, I really apologize. I have no idea what that is. Um, yeah, I apologize for the hair. Um, I think the makeup look actually turned out really cool, especially the eyes. I like those a lot. Um, there is one more question. Um, and I feel like this kind of comes up a lot um, in all my videos. Um, this was, when will you be providing audiobooks? I really feel your voice is what my ears need. <laughs> um, thank you. It is something that's mentioned quite often. People really like the sound of my voice. Um, again, I... Thank you. I don't understand it, but um, audiobooks, um, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe that could happen in the future. Um, but thank you guys so much for all of the cool questions. I had a lot of fun making this video. Um, I can't believe how many questions came in, and I think there were some that I didn't even get to. Um, maybe we could do a part two at some point. Um, if you have any other questions, if there's anything that I didn't answer, you can go ahead and leave them down below. And there's going to be a lot of links in the description box down below as well. So um, if you are interested in any of the music I talked about or any of the movies that I talked about or any of that kind of stuff, um, there should be some clickable links down below if you're interested in any of that stuff. But just like always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here and I'll see you on the next one.